Hi guys, it's Ariel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about the Stanley Cup craze that has taken all of social media by a storm. Get up, get up, stupid. Get up, get up. We just watched one by one and the line was massive. This is my updated um, Tumblr wall. I've seen so many other good videos by other creators on YouTube and on TikTok. But I wanted to add my own perspective to talk about the Stanley Cup experience in France, in Europe, and to talk more about why I think the Stanley brand and specifically the Quencher product failed to gain popularity in France and in Europe. I think for anyone outside of the US, the whole Stanley Cup hype is baffling, not because I mean to say that all Americans own a Stanley or all Americans are Stanley Cup addicted, but the videos that are coming out of the US and going viral and making it onto the French TikTok for you page or like on the Instagram Reels page are kind of insane. I think that they give anyone outside of the US major culture shock. And I'll give you guys a couple examples of what I'm talking about because they really are very crazy. The The first set of viral Stanley videos that I think made it to my For You page in France were the ones about the Starbucks limited edition collab and the Valentine's Day limited edition collection, like the pink and the red cups. And all of a sudden you see these viral videos of people going to Target and getting in line at midnight and waiting for the store to open and just people, hundreds of people in line. There was this one dad who went viral with his daughter. They came to a Target at midnight. They set up these lawn chairs. We spent the night at Target for the new Stanley Starbucks cup. Yes, I know what you're thinking. It's a cup. Why, what are you doing? On the other hand, I love my daughter and we were bored. So we got there like at 1.40 in the morning and it was a ghost town because it was Target in the middle of the night. But once we saw the cup, we knew we were in the right spot. We brought the new puppy with us and just waited for people to show up and they did. So we hopped out of the car, brought the chairs and made sure we were first in line. So it was almost three o'clock in the morning and that's when people started to show up. I mean, these people are dedicated. We just watched one by one and the line was massive and it was cold. like. 40 degrees cold. And then the stores open and people are rushing in and pushing each other on the ground and people are falling all over the place and like elbowing each other to get to these cups and stores having to put limits on what you can buy. One over here and two over here. <laughs> And there was another video I saw of a man who actually jumped over the counter to rob, I guess it was a Starbucks and a Target, but rob them of their stock of these limited edition Starbucks Stanley collabs. And you have the whole line of people just outraged, worried they're not gonna get a cup. <laughs> Get up, get up, stupid. Get him, get him. Stop him, stop him, stop him, stop him. Yeah, stop him. And to see this, not just hype, but kind of violence to get access to buy a product is just insane. I don't think you would ever see that in France or, or Europe. And then after Christmas, I also started to see all of these videos of children, specifically young girls, opening their Christmas gifts and getting their first Stanley Cup and just screaming with joy, being insanely happy that, that they got these cups for Christmas. And I wanna show examples because I think it's kind of weird to repost 11 year old girls unwrapping their Christmas gifts and stuff, but it was just insane to see these kids go feral for these Stanley Cups. And then you also had another mom who went viral for buying her, I think it was a nine-year-old daughter, a Stanley knockoff. This is the cup that we got our daughter for Christmas. This is not a Stanley. This is a 9.98 Walmart cup that she said she thought was cute. She is nine years old. On the second day back to school after Christmas break, she comes home. She's not crying, she's just upset. The girls, all the other girls in her grade, I'm not saying all, maybe, 
she said nine, 10 of them all got Stanleys for Christmas. And they made sure to let her know that this is not a real Stanley, that this is fake and it's not as cool. And her daughter was like so happy with it and everything. And then her daughter takes it to school and everybody bullies her because it's a knockoff. And so her parents feel obligated to go out and buy the real thing. And it was just this whole dramatic story. And then the other set of viral Stanley Cup videos that have made it to France are the massive Stanley Cup collection videos that are circulating where women will just show off the hundreds of Stanley Cups they own. They'll take you to like a designated room with shelving on the walls with tens and tens and tens of Stanley Cups in every single color and every single collection. And again, that's something that I think is really shocking to a lot of French people, never mind Europeans, because it's like, why do you have 60 of the same really expensive cup? And then two and a half months ago, I was on Instagram and I started to see ads for the Stanley Cup. And I was like, no, please don't have this trend come to France. I will lose it if people start going feral for Stanley Cups in Paris. But then I clicked on the ad just because I was curious and I saw the price of these cups and I knew immediately that this was never ever gonna fly in France. And so that's the first reason that I think the Stanley Cup trend never caught on in France is because Stanley Europe has priced these cups for Europeans at 49 euros. And if you do a quick money conversion, that's equal to 53 American dollars. And keep in mind that these are being sold in the US for $45. So they are marketing this product to Europeans for even more than what they're asking Americans to pay. And the problem with this is that generally speaking, Europeans earn far less on average than Americans do and I actually did some research on this to get the real numbers for you So you can look at this table that I found from the OECD and I selected a couple European countries Popular travel destinations so that we can get a good idea of what people around the world are making on average and what I really like about this chart is that it has the salary both in the local currency, but then also converted to American dollars so we have right off the bat the average annual salary in the US in 2022 was 77,463 US dollars. In Germany, this was 55,940 USD. In Greece, it was 25,979 USD. In Spain, it was 42,859 USD. And in France, it was 52,764 USD, which is 30% less than the average American salary. So it really does not make sense to ask people who earn between 30 and 60% less than Americans to pay more than Americans for this trendy cup. Now this isn't an economics class, okay, we're not gonna talk about salaries around the world, but European salaries are lower than American salaries for a lot of reasons. The first ones that come to the top of my head are the fact that in France, for example, post-grad education is, is free. And if it's not free, it's a couple hundred euros. And same goes for student housing, we have universal health care. We have a lot more social services um, than you might have in the US. So salary isn't the only thing um, that speaks to the quality or the cost of living in a country. But generally speaking, Europeans do earn less than Americans, which means that here in France, for example, we have less disposable income on a global scale. And it means that products that are made in Europe, like local products that are made and sold here, reflect the salaries that we earn. And so when an American company tries to sell a product that is four times the price of what you're paying for European products, it doesn't make sense to switch over to the insanely expensive American product, you know? Now, my second point is where are people in France going to store these massively oversized water bottles. Like where in my 15 meter squared apartment in Paris am I gonna fit one of these water bottles, let alone an entire collection of them? People have given me a lot of flack when I talked about this in previous videos, but statistically and factually speaking, Europeans and French people 
live in smaller spaces when you compare that to the average American. And again, I came with the receipts. We have the Mises Institute that reported that while the US has approximately on average 2.4 rooms per person in a house, France only has 1.8. And while the average floor space of a newly built home in the US is 214 meters squared, in France it is 113 meters squared, almost half the size. You guys, before I moved in with Jean, I was truly living in a 15 meter squared apartment, which is the size of a small kitchen. I had a pullout couch that opened into my kitchen to sleep on. Where was I gonna install a shelf to put my 65 Stanley Cups? You know, it's just, logistically speaking, French people do not have the kind of space to store this kind of product. And moving on to my third point, when we're talking about the logistics of these cups, these cups are designed for people who are living in big houses, but also who drive around a lot in their car. And again, statistically speaking, Americans are more likely to be driving in their car than Europeans. I got some more receipts. According to Statistia, 23% of French people get around via public transportation, while this is only the case for 13% of Americans. And moreover, if we look at the amount of cars people have in the US, per 1,000 people in the US, 834 own a car, while this is only 570 in France. And to be honest, the Stanley design is great for a car. You have that thinner bottom part of the cup that fits nicely into a cup holder. It holds a lot of water, it keeps it cold. It's great for being on the road in your car for long periods of time. But again, tell me how I am gonna bring this massive purse-sized water bottle with me on the Parisian Metro when it is so crowded sometimes that I barely even have like room for my own body, you know? And when we're talking about public transportation as well, like what about the germs? I can't even imagine the bacteria and the disease that is just going to be all over the straw that sticks out of the cup that isn't, isn't coverable in any way when I'm taking the metro, when I'm taking the bus, when I'm getting on a public transportation bike. There's just no way that it is sanitary for people who use public transportation often to be drinking out of these cups. And again, when you're in your own car, you don't have to worry about these things, about the sanitation and the cleanliness of the space where your straw is exposed because it's your own personal car. So that is all. Those are my three main reasons as to why I think the Stanley Cup never became popular in France, will never become popular, and products like it will never fly here. I think that the Stanley Cup was designed for an American consumer who has the money, the space, and the cars to use this cup that French people don't necessarily have. And I really do think that there is a difference in lifestyle when you compare American lifestyle to French lifestyle, and this product does a really good job of showcasing those differences. So that is all for my little Stanley Cup rant. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you own a Stanley and if you like it. I've never seen one in person, so I'd be curious to know if they really are worth all the hype. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.